Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be going through and doing an unboxing and review of the Warrior 7 Amp Belt Sander. It is a 3 inch edition and this is the 21 inch long belt. I uh, am, as you can see, in the middle of a project of redoing my deck and was needing an additional tool. So I ran over to good old Harbor Freight, picked up this little guy, figured I'd give you guys a little bit of an insight just for what you're seeing as you open the box, my first impression of it, and then I have this task ahead of me to do, so we'll make this one kind of quick. Opening the box, first and foremost, of course, you have your little instructional booklet. Nicely, it does actually come with additional brushes. I didn't know that. That's pretty nice. Got our dust collector bag. It's actually one of the features I was really happy about because my Craftsman I've been using for quite a while, it's an oldie, is nice. It has a good belt cover on it, but no way for any of the sawdust to really exhaust except for behind the belt. So when I'm working on a flat surface like this and not near the edge of it on a table of whatever project I'm working for, the sawdust ends up kind of pooling, and if I pull backward instead of just going straight forward with it, I just kind of re-scoop all that sawdust and kind of put it between the belt and what I'm working on. So it changes the grip pattern, and it can cause kind of an unevenness to it, so you only really can go forward with it. This, and all the dust going up and out into this, gives me an ability for not only minor dust collection, the ability to hook hose to it, but also keeps that from happening. So one of the other features I'm really happy about. And that's pretty much it for what's in the box. Pulling it out, we have our little cellophane bag on top of the tool. Looking over, it does come with a belt to begin with, which is nice. You have a flap design here to take on and off the belt, pretty standard. This is the cheaper model in comparison to the Bauer and Hercules as well, but I was needing it for a task, figured I'd give it a, a try and see how it works. Belt goes on and off, pretty standard for belt sanders. Everything looks pretty well encapsulated, so it actually is nice because it channels all the sawdust right up into the port right here. You have your belt on the outside that can be removed. Your brushes will be right here and on the back. Same thing as usual for brushes, just a little flathead to take that out. Variable speed is right up here, which is nice. So as you're going with it and moving, you can adjust that very nicely. It is all plastic, but it's a lot thicker plastic. So I feel like this could actually take a few tumbles and a few drops. You have your standard adjustment. So that way, if your belt starts to travel either too close or just tries to come right off, you can do the little spring adjustment. It does feel responsive and it's not super loose. So all in all, actually feels like pretty decent build quality for being majority of plastic. And this item, uh, was on a minor sale. Uh, this can be normally around upwards of $50 if they have no sales currently on it. Otherwise, it can go down as cheap as $29.99. Um, I think I got this for around that. And it looks to be pretty decent build quality. And underneath the belt is a steel plate, which is nice. There are a few models that actually utilize plastic, so it's pretty much very minimal use. This one actually does have the steel beneath that belt. So, should last a while, we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. So without further ado, let's get going on this project more. So far with it, 
I have to say, it is very light and very easy to control and move around with. This does not feel like a heavy brick in my hand. Uh, the other one I have been using, the Craftsman, is nice, and it's nice to have metal components, but that does definitely wear you out quite often, faster than you want it to. The results that I'm getting are nice. The variable speed is nice, so depending on the project I'm working on and the grid of the belt that I'm working with, it gives me the ability to control very quickly if I want to remove a lot or if I want to remove a little versus the other one is just a one speed and it just goes and even at this top end speed this does not seem to really pull or give me so much resistance that I feel like I'm getting a solid arm workout so so far really enjoying it we'll continue with the project here kind of show you some finish end results on what it's going to look like after using this little guy for a little while to refinish and re-get this deck back the way I want it to be all right, we'll give a quick recap on what we're looking at here. So this is the Warrior brand, model number 56916. It is the 3 inch by 21 inch belt sander. Uh, it is the 7 amp motor with a variable speed from 500 to 1050 feet per minute. Uh, it has a sealed ball bearing motor, uh, the standard lock button for the trigger, which is pretty nice and actually works really well. Uh, has a pretty much well now standard six foot power cord. Uh, has a normal tracking knob uh, for the sanding belt. It, this model includes a dust bag, which is pretty nice. I have an older model um, Sears that you've probably seen me use in a couple of different videos, and it's great. But all of the dust collection for that older generation, the Sears and Roebuck model, was right behind the belt. So unless you're going purely in a forward motion, you have zero track backwards usually end up with just a pile of dust right behind the belt. And that is kind of standard for older school models, but having the dust collection is very nice. Uh, we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, the packaging for the box was just a cellophane bag for the tool itself and the cellophane bag that went around the instruction manual or owner's manual. Uh, the one benefit that was really nice is that this came with, as you saw earlier, the two brushes. So we'll kind of go through quick little thoughts on this real quick. So for usability for this tool, the tool is very light, um, and I mean it, it's pretty light in comparison. It's not a steel bottom on it. You have a stainless steel plate for the belt to go against for you to apply pressure with, but otherwise the majority of the rest of it is plastic. Now that being said, you would think, oh gosh, plastic, I remember so many different flimsy tools, the uh, original Ryobi's and a couple other tools that weren't really stout and had kind of flex. Right, well, I'll take that back. The 18 volt um, dark blue Ryobi was stout, but when it well, first went green, they were very flimsy in the hand. And then they somehow just kind of fixed that up. That and Hitachi. Hitachi kind of takes the gold for flimsy plastic for the original OG models, in my opinion, for their first set of drills they came out with was just terrible. That, that was not a fan. Anyway, this is actually stout, very thick plastic. So it needed to be plastic. They quadruple walled this thing for how thick it is. You can almost see on these two risers here, just how thick pretty much the rest of the plastic is. Uh, all right, so that being said, it has a standard tracking knob. I like the knob. There's some issues, I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, it feels like as soon as I do adjust this and get it right where it needs to be, I don't have to worry about it. This is an actual pretty nice tensioner in here for being plastic and just a basic spring setup in here. It actually holds pretty darn well, which is nice. It actually does still have the steel rod that goes through, pretty standard for that. Uh, it's just an, a plastic outer knob, nothing too major there. Cut and cost a little bit and weight. This is pretty light. I don't know the actual weight of it. I just know in comparison to the two, the other one's probably a good 10 pounds and moving that back and forth on anything that you're sanding on, you don't really want to sand for long, but it applies the weight for you. This one's lighter, so it doesn't wear you out as much, but you do have to apply a little bit of weight. So just keep that in mind. Uh, uh, it does have dust collection, which is very nice. Uh, like I said, on my other model, I'm very used to, and a variety of other models I've used in the past, you don't always get dust collection. It's probably something new, probably something since 2005, and I will say most of the belt sanders I used back in the day weren't from 2005. So we'll kind of touch on some of the points that I had to say on that end for, I'm definitely not the only one out there, but I know there's a few of us that have used some of the old tried and true Craftsman, Sears Roebuck, a uh, couple of old 
brands come to mind that are no longer uh, Delta brand, <laughs> a couple of different ones. Delta's still around, but they've refined what tools they actually have past just some unisaws and a couple shop saws. I think a table saw is the other one, the primary things that they had that were kind of the main keystrokes in that brand. Otherwise, they've sold a lot of their patents to other companies for motors and so on and so forth. All right, for durability on this, it is still plastic, but I will say it is Begrudgingly, I did drop this a couple times on my deck while I was resurfacing it and on the dirt. So it wasn't concrete and it wasn't super crazy, you know, like three stories up in some construction job site or anything. But I will say it took it like a champ and I have no scuffs and the rubber is not coming off of it. And I used this for quite some time and heated this thing up pretty, pretty roughly <laughs> using it for hours and hours on end all day long pretty much like off and on pretty much all day long to get the project done. For all the refinements and everything else, this was pretty much one of the main soldiers in that, that battle. <laughs> and it held up and I have no doubt plugging it in and reusing it and I've used it on a couple other projects that I do for stuff that I sell in our area of the good old western slope Colorado. So I've sold a few different things, different projects I've made and this has done that job after doing that big job and I see no difference from when I first pulled it out of the box, which is nice to see having known that I used this thing long enough that the side of it was getting hot, but it took hours of use before it got to that point. Belt centers are pretty good about their fan clutch in here actually cooling as the belt is being run to actually run the primary belt. So you have your motor belt and then you have the actual sanding belt. And these are designed very well to cool the motor pretty nicely. And this one did a pretty darn good job. And I like a lot of the porting that they have in here is not too much to we're gonna worry about so much cake dust in there but enough that I could feel comfortable taking an air compressor hose and hitting this pretty good and feeling pretty confident to not have to really take it apart. That being said, these are standard screws, which is really nice to see. They didn't go with some crazy, need a security bit from the other aisle of Harbor Freight to get this thing taken apart to do any basic maintenance and cleaning. You can all take it apart with just a basic Phillips screwdriver, which is nice. All right, plastic couple drops. Uh, the dust bag should last you pretty well. It's actually not canvas, but it's not burlap. It's a little bit better than t-shirt material. So it's, it'll still breathe and move, but it does feel like it could actually last pretty decently. I'm not going to say this thing will last you as long as a tool will, because it's fabric. And depending on where you're at, elevation, if you have varmints or critters around that might try to chew through it and make a nest in it, any matter of things could happen to it or just basic tears because it is fabric. So I can't necessarily say it's bulletproof and it's going to last you forever because any tent or any other material that you use still has that chance of getting a tear in it, but still very good. Uh, I will say one thing I was very happy about is that when you take the dust bag, and yes I did use this, and I forgot to empty the bag, <laughs> you can use, I have a small shop bag from Lowe's. It's actually a shop back brand and it uses a standard hose and it's a snug fit but it slides pretty much on right away and I can use this with this on smaller projects or even larger projects if I have this on wheels or something like that to roll around and continue to dust collect and if this is actually inhaling the dust this thing would work amazing because that bag actually houses and moves the dust into itself quite nicely. Uh, chop saws or a variety of other things that have dust collection bags aren't always guaranteeing even 50% of your dust eruption from whatever you're cutting actually going into it. They'll say that they'll boast roughly about 50%, but they don't ever really say 100%. It's not the intention of the bag to be there, that's why you usually get a dust collection system. So it's nice to see that this will actually just hook up to pretty much a standard hose adapter or a, a hose for like a vacuum. If you have the three inch or four inch for larger dust collection, that one of course attached to this. You're gonna to need to adapt it down in some way, but that would also be very cumbersome trying to have like a four inch or three inch hose trailing behind this thing. So it's nice to see just a standard vacuum, which most of us would have, or we'd have the smaller um, shop back, which I've had that small dust or shop back forever. And I've upgraded since then to the large one, and I do have my large dust collection, but it is still, been invaluable as an item to have kind of around the shop or in vehicles and such. Side notes. All right, let's do some pros and cons on this tool for you. So pros, it has very good power 
and it has very good speed for what it is. Um, this is a good, even if you go to Harbor Freight and look at it, this is the good category. They have the better as their Bauer, and they have the best as their Hercules brand. So this, in their category, they put as their baseline or good brand. So it's still a good one. It's not overly uber cheap. I feel that some of the stuff that I've gotten for Warrior that they've had there, even though it's on par in their book as their central machinery, some of their central machinery has been not as good. Although I can't fully knock central machinery because my dust collector is central machinery. And it's been rebranded. I think, I can't remember exactly. That might still be... Yeah, no, that's still a central machinery, and I think central machinery still is prevalent there, but they've kind of changed their house brand name a little bit, but the OG central machinery brand days were the note of either make or break tools for Harbor Freight. There were some that were absolute tried and true, and there were some that were absolute trash, and that was one of the ones that were tried and true, but I do know some of their other central machinery stuff was just so flimsy, and this actually feels stout in comparison. Uh, continuing on. Uh, another, or we'll kind of do back and forth a little bit here. So a con for you is that the plastic can melt from the belt. So the tracking knob is good. My downfall was I didn't check it quick enough after I applied pressure to the project. I started just kind of feeling it out. And on my other unit, you could kind of hear it drop down in amperage a little bit as it's hitting the steel sides of my Craftsman. This being majority of plastic, like I said, with only the one um, stainless steel plate in the bottom of it, you ended up, or you will find that the plastic can actually start getting eaten. Uh, the belt tracked over into the plastic here and started to eat it a little bit. And I smelled it, so luckily on that end, I smelled it pretty quick and kind of saw a little smoke, stopped, and immediately adjusted by tracking and it works fine. And as you can see, I've kind of left the tracking to where the belt's a little bit more secure and away from that. But that is one thing that I will say is definitely a con and it can be considered a gripe for sure on a hey, why didn't you fix this but at the same regard at this price point it's kind of negligible uh we'll track that or we'll let's cover that real quick so this unit is on sale when i got it 30 to 35 bucks um currently not on sale even though it, harbor freight always says it's on kind of like a mild sale but um just their standard everyday price is 39.99 so still on the market, this is going to be one of your cheaper belt sanders that you can get. I'm not sure what the Ryobi is going for right now, but most by and large belt sanders start at around $50 to $60 beginning. And then they go up from there pretty drastically. I'm noticing a lot more of an upgrade in quality over some of their newer brands that they have at Harbor Freight, but I noticed a lot of their prices kind of jumped up a little bit too. Uh, you can get this on sale, like I said, for around 30 bucks, so $29.99, if I remember right. You also have, like, the uh, Inside Track um, coupons that they offer still, and every now and again they'll have tool coupons. 2021's been kind of odd for that, for just what they will and won't offer for coupons. It's been a little odd. But their quality has jumped up, but the price jumped up a little bit. The original Central Machinery you could get on sale most often for around 20 bucks, if not 15 bucks. But its quality reflected that price drastically. Warrior brand, in my opinion, has stepped it up a little bit, and there are some benefits to it. Uh, continuing on with pros here for you. Uh, this is super easy to use. I will say this is absolute. If you've never used a belt sander before, this is very forgiving. Besides the tracking that you might just want to keep an eye on, the rest of this tool is very user friendly. And it is pretty much just pull the trigger and go. Although be careful, I had a comedic moment. My wife wishes very much so that she was filming uh, this in shipping and maybe even just with me playing with it. I had engaged this trigger lock here and plugged it in and it tried to run away from me. And it's one of the jokes to belt sanders. It can happen very easily or it can be lightly depressed on some models. This one is a very in out for its trigger and you can see and feel very, very plainly if it is or isn't locked. And you can see this nice orange on black if it's gone or not and if it's visible for the trigger. Now the trigger on that same note is very responsive. So if I start to engage and fully depress it will trigger right off the bat and send the signal. I've had a few uh, central machinery in question as well. I, had, I did get to use the $20 model a few times at a couple of different acquaintances houses when I was helping with projects and the trigger seemed very feathery and like every now and again wasn't really there and just felt like 
you would open it up and see the tiniest amount of little nickel wires going together, not even copper, trying to help hold and house and send a signal to the rest of it. This actually feels pretty stout and very responsive with the trigger and it has a nice solid spring pushing it out against you. And that engage and disengage is audible, which is nice. Uh, good trigger lock is the other pro. Uh, the speed control knob on this. Turn around here a little bit. So the speed control knob is very plain and seen with the orange on black, which is nice, and you can move it very freely, but it does hold firm. So you can move it without feeling like you absolutely have to like put pressure into it. You can move it, but it does stay in place. So if I spin it to like a two or even a two and a half or something like that, it would hold its place and doesn't feel like it's gonna rumble one way or the other. And you can hear a nice click when it gets into its full speed. And then it just doesn't make a noise when you get it to the top end. So it's only when you hear that click that you're like moving it and you don't have to necessarily look at it. But if you hear the click or feel the click, kind of that response, then you would know it's at max speed versus if it's on absolute one. Uh, the one gripe I'll say or con on that same note is that the sides of the dial of the plastic you might want to sand a little bit. They're grabby. So as you're moving your hand, if you're doing it quickly and your hands aren't super rough or calloused, those will bite. <laughs> and that's that's a gripe. It's a it's a mild gripe of of course. So enough of a enough to make it a con. Nothing super bad about that, but enough to make it just notable. Da, 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 da. The dust collection bag is very nice and it does collect most everything pretty much that goes into it for the most part. On the cons list as well, I will say that on the top part of this, a little bit harder to see here on camera. So if you take this off, in order for this little spring mechanism that they put in here, they have to leave a little bit of the loose or laxness and they kind of put in some Velcro. So if you're not checking the Velcro or it gets really gummed up with dust, this will end up just kind of being a hose for sawdust coming out of this little hole in the back here. So it's nice that they did put Velcro to kind of like compensate for the fact that you will be opening and closing this to take it on and off. But that is one thing that's kind of annoying a little bit. I'd almost take the time and sew it up nice and tight so that way there isn't a problem at all. Uh, tracking knob stays and after you make an adjustment, I already noted that earlier. The cord is long, and the reason I note that is that I've had a couple of different tools on par with this, some large grinders or even just little peanut grinders that I absolutely hated it. They pretty much just, oh yeah, well if you're working, you're gonna have a 100 foot long construction grade, you know, extension cord with you, right? And it's like, wait, no. So a lot of tools, and I know a few of you out there will know this as well, had just three inch pigtails. It was the most annoying thing in the world because if you didn't have an extension cable readily available right there when you grab the tool, you weren't thinking because it was a long day at work or something else was going on, or hey, you're gonna go over to a friend's house and he just so happens to have no extension cables that are three prong. So you're trying to find some way to cob together and a lot of construction grade tools are just normal tools that even using uh, 120 volt need a thicker gauge in order to properly send the current for the tool to even turn on. Otherwise, a lot of times it even damages the tool, so you can't even use like a cheater on a two-prong extension cable to make it work. So there's a few times it's like, hang on, I'm gonna drive home, grab an extension cable, and drive back. Luckily, with most modern tools, we always get a, a six-foot cord, but sometimes we are stunted with like a one-foot or a three-foot cord, and a one-foot just seems like, why even bother? Just put a three-inch on there, at least tell me, so then I know to get an extension cable. But a one-foot's just an absolute tease, because what plug-in is going to have a project other than right here that's going to make one foot work? And even then, it's like, as soon as you get a little bit away from the extent, it's just a bad idea. So having six foot's nice. That's why I make sure to note that. Uh, it comes with at least one belt, which is nice. And it's a 120 grit, so it's a nice in-between. It's not something super fine, and it's not something so gritty that you're like throwing on a 30 grit or a 65 grit or some kind of odd, I think it's like 35 and 60 grit are the most like grittiest that you can usually get for belts on these. And a lot of times you have to order those. I don't think those are on shelves. Anyway, so it is nice that they had a 120 on here to begin with. I burned through that pretty quickly in the porch project and ended up using a lot of 80 grit just to get 
a lot of uh, the roughness down generally and then I went back through it with the palm sander me and the wife did and made sure it was nice and smooth. Uh, the handle on this is really nice. Uh, I do want to note that because I've used a couple different handles in the past that were like a odd almost not pistol grip. This is your standard down motion but it does connect back too so a couple of ones I used this was floating and it would almost flex. So as you're belt sanding and you're applying downward pressure you're kind of flexing the plastic the whole time which just felt like yeah I'm gonna snap this thing in half one of these days. I don't know when but one of these days. This one stayed nice firm didn't bend or flex or anything. Uh, they put rubber on the outside of it that actually is nice and it's well melded together and properly glued together. It's not just those little like rivets and it's not like one or two screws in it. It's actually adhered all the way down. Same with the top here. So you actually do have a nice grip that is rubber, uh, something that you can dust off or clean and get an extra little bit of friction so that way it, it holds nice in the hand without making it like super sweaty and it's not super abrasive that you're going to literally have parts of your hand kind of like rolling off at the end of the day, which I've had with some tools. When they try to knurl plastic, it just ends up being mild grade sandpaper and if you have to use a tool for anything over an hour, if it's just knurled plastic, stay away from it. There's a reason it's cheaper and it hurts. <laughs> you go with something that's got rubber, it's worth it. And in this case, it's actually the cheaper option, around 30, 30 to 40 bucks. I choose this one. All right, brushes can be replaced. I note this because there was a Hitachi model I played with around for a while that was noted to me by the owner that it's wonderful, but once those brushes burn out, better throw the trash. And it was literally melded plastic where you put brushes in. And it was the most innate, like, benign setup I've ever seen and I'm like why anyway uh, the motor belts can be changed so there is a screw right here that takes out the housing and you can actually in the back of the manual find the part listing on this exploded sheet to buy the components for the unit which is phenomenal that you can actually look up name off what it is look up that part and a lot of times these corresponding parts you can purchase for it if you so desire. Now, that being said, a motor might run you around 40 bucks. So that's kind of depending. <laughs> but a belt, if it's five bucks on a $30 tool, five bucks for a belt on a tool you have taken care of and know will continue working, spend the five bucks. It's worth it. And sometimes you can get upgraded belts and other upgraded components for this, which is nice. All right, finish out the gripes. So this is a lighter model. I had noted that earlier in comparison to my Craftsman. This one could be slightly heavier. I like that it's lighter. It won't wear your arms out as much, but you do have to apply more pressure. So I kind of wish there was a little bit more weight, but I am happy it's lighter. So out of the two, I'll probably keep reaching for this one. But depending on the project, I might actually grab the other one if I know I'm going to have to take down a quick, heavy amount of grit off of something. Because it's easier to just grab something heavy and just kind of set it on there and guide it as it does the work for you. Versus something like this, you can be a lot more finesse. You don't have to sand something as much, but you want to get a wide area of it. This will do the trick awesomely. Uh, uh, proper word there. <laughs> uh, there are some mild sharpnesses on the speed control, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, this one bothered me a whole bunch. So I love the dust collection, but they put a screw, kind of hard to see here, but there is a screw for the plastic because this mold of plastic versus this mold of plastic, they have attaching points for screws, but they put one right through the nozzle. I, that is an absolute why moment that I would honestly say it's a little redneck, but I would take the screw out and I'd go through with like a uh, coping saw or some kind of little blade off of like a sawzall or something and just go by hand and cut that out so that you actually have proper dust collection because otherwise I'm getting a whole bunch of dust build up in there because of a large piece of plastic that houses the screw to mold two pieces of plastic together. It's a design flaw and I mean I'm complaining over a 30 35 dollar tool. So another possible gripe and of course this is price point uh, your tension release lever is plastic so it does work good and it holds nice and sturdy but if you're not thinking it's a hot day you've been using this thing for hours and hours and hours this could become a little bit more flimsy uh, i felt stout even though i got this really hot but eventually that could be a, a breaking point now that also begs the question how long you expect to have this so we'll answer that here in just a second or just kind of bring that question up to you 
So let's say, who would buy this tool? Who would use this tool? I personally would say that any enthusiast or beginner would absolutely love to have this in their workshop, have this in their garage or their toolbox, any of that. This would be a great addition and it wouldn't break the bank. So if you're trying to accumulate tools to start into woodworking, any kind of carpentry, if you're trying to work into framing, trying to do something of any kind of finish work or something that you might need a belt sander for, you, this is a tool that you could definitely pick up and let's say you either run it for a year or two and you want to upgrade. It's not like you went out and spent $150 on a really nice medium to larger grade version of a belt sander and then to just decided, well, let's just go for the cream of the crop and go to like a fest tool or something like that and spend hundreds of dollars on it. This is something that you could go out and after that amount of time be like, you know, I've gotten my money's worth. After a year to two years of just off and on or consistent use, I feel this tool can go into someone else, sell it at a yard sale for five to 10 bucks. You still make some money back, put it into the next investment, buy the next up. How long could this tool last? This tool could last you years depending on how well you take care of it or it could last you a month or two depending on if you just absolutely toss it in the back of a truck it always rattles around in your toolbox it could not survive that in those regards i feel it could to an extent i will give it that but by and large i've seen very expensive tools destroyed in a matter of moments depending on the individual handling them so i'm not going to really say that this is the absolute you know it's a brick you throw it at the wall it's not going to damage it it could it's still plastic could it last on a job site? Depending on the job site. If you're doing finish work and you're just around basic carpet, interior, if you're working on basic homes, not commercial job sites, this could last you just fine. And if you are in a team of guys that are actually gonna respect it, this could last just as long, if not longer than any of the other top brands, in my opinion. Plus also the fact that you get replacement brushes. My DeWalt's don't come with replacement brushes. I have to buy replacement brushes for those. I have to buy replacement brushes for any of the rest of the tools in my entire workshop. And this $35 tool came with them. <laughs> that just kind of blows my mind. All right, so ultimate conclusion here. It is a good tool for the money, hands down. Uh, it is not a DeWalt, it is not a Makita, it is not a Craftsman, but it is also not the price of those as well. So just keep that in perspective. You get what you pay for in that regard. So don't be expecting or knocking it down that it doesn't have some laser guided sight on it or a track that comes with it to do expert sanding. It's a $35 tool. And I feel like I need to emphasize that because there's a few individuals that feel like they're gypped out of something or they're shortchanged when it's not at all because you're buying a tool for a purpose and you know what you're getting for the price. So just to clarify that a little bit. Uh, would I recommend this to anybody? I would, pretty much anybody that needs one. And it's a very budget friendly. If you're just starting out, like I said, this is great for you. If you're enthusiast grade or you don't have one of these in your toolbox, but you've been in all the trades for a while, this is something you can add without breaking the budget or the bank and feel like you still have a tool that's worth using and it's not absolutely just like, eh, well, it'll get us through today. It can last longer than that. And it can take any standard 21 inch uh, belt that's three inches wide. And it does it just fine. So hopefully you enjoyed uh, this review here and my thoughts on it. Uh, hopefully they'll help you in your decision. If this is the video you're reviewing in the store or just before you even go to the store on just different um, possible tools to be picked up. Uh, this one and any of the other tool reviews in my lineup. Feel free to look at any of those of any of those potential future purchases for yourself. Uh, hopefully this one has helped you and hopefully any of those will help you as well. Uh, if you like the video make sure and hit like. If you want it would help me out greatly. I would love if you would hit the subscribe button as well so that way you know all the next content that's coming out. I get bookmarked in your YouTube channel so that way you're able to look through at any of the old ones going oh wait where was that one guy that was messing with that tool or had that project that was it's something inspired me or something like that that's how you're going to be able to look that up a lot easier than trying to go through your history of however many videos you looked up on one subject or another hit that notification bell helps you helps me and it gives you the ability to know exactly who it was that you were looking up some video on for products as such or content as such so thank you all again have yourself a good one